Welding the cast iron can be kind of challenging sometimes because there's some extra steps you have to take to try and make sure that it welds up okay. I've welded uh, cast iron in the past quite a few times on different projects and had some success with just regular MIG wire. Sometimes they recommend using a nickel-based uh, filler material to weld up cast iron. However, it's not always 100% necessary. You can get by with MIG wire. I've gotten by with MIG wire a lot in the past and so have a lot of different friends of mine who have done the same thing. Just a few projects that I've done over the years. I, I had done some a 14 bolt shave kit and I know a lot of friends have as well where you cut the bottom off a 14 bolt axle and then weld the plate up to the bottom of it. That welded up just fine with some preheat with just a propane torch, and that's still on my rock crawler today after 10 years of smashing through the rocks. Another thing that I've welded up in the past were Chevy Dana 60 knuckles. So these are knuckles mm -hmm. off a Chevy Dana 60 axle, and they have high steer, so I wanted to tie the high steer down to the bottom of the knuckle. And then so what happened is I put all these plates in and then welded it up. The first time I tried welding on it, I didn't have enough preheat and it cracked. The welds just cracked pretty much right in front of my face. So I did a little bit more research and looked and, and people recommended if you're gonna use regular MIG wire that you should get them a lot hotter. So what I did next time is I put them in my barbecue grill rather than just using a small propane heater and I put them in there and I got them up to like 500 degrees and then they welded up really nice. Now the second part of that, after you weld them up, is the post heat part. You have to cool them down very slowly. Um, some people wrap them in a welding blanket, some people bury them in sand. And then one idea I had is I got my wood stove behind me, I filled that with wood, got it super hot, put the knuckles all around there and just kind of kept, kept it burning for an entire afternoon then slowly let it burn out. And that worked really good. I didn't see any kind of cracking or anything for them. So those are some examples of how I've welded things up in the past, just use welded to cast iron, just using regular MIG wire. The reason cast iron is difficult to weld to is because it has a lot of junk in it, a lot of impurities and things. For these Ford Dana 60 knuckles, I had to weld the high steer arm to so here's an example, here's a preview of what it's gonna look like at the end of the video. So anyway, here's the knuckle, and then I bought a high steer kit for it. And then I had to add to the high steer kit because the first high steer kit I bought wasn't high enough. And so I'll get to that here in a minute. So my process for these, what I did, I had to drill out this knuckle, I had to drill it out for a bigger bolt. I had to weld up all these plates, I put it all together. Um, cleaned up the knuckle really good. Then I went and put it on my barbecue grill. I got it up to 500 degrees and then I welded up this first section. At that point, I realized that I didn't have high enough steering for what I wanted. And my, one of my last videos where I'm putting together the steering ram on the Dana 60, I realized it wasn't high enough for what I wanted. So I needed to go back and add another layer to, these, to this knuckle that I already had it. So what I did is I called up a friend in town here. They own a shop called Warfab. Uh, his name's Mike down at Warfab. They make some really nice Toyota bumpers and different off-road bumpers and such. So I'm gonna link their channel just down below. Anyway, they helped me out. I called them up and I was like, hey, can you cut me out some brackets to make this taller? So I dropped it off down at his shop. He measured it up, cut me out some extra plates and they turned out great. So thanks again, Mike, uh, I appreciate it. They turned out great. So I had to go through that whole process again. Basically, I had to heat them up, put them in the barbecue grill again, heat them up. Um, well, first, before I did that, first thing I had to do was weld these plates to the existing plates. Then I put it into the barbecue grill, heated it up, got it really nice and hot, and then I welded this up. However, <clears throat> This time I wanted to try something different. So I bought some new TIG filler material. So this is called Easy Weld. This is called Easy Weld TIG Wire. 
And so I ordered this online and this is supposed to be really good stuff for welding the cast iron. I watched a few different videos about it online, watched a few different demonstrations. So I wanted to try it for this video. So what I did is because I had already MIG welded down here, I just went over that entire weld uh, with some of this easy weld and then my entire new weld up and over the top I did with the easy weld and so I had preheated it got it good and hot and the easy weld seemed to weld up pretty nicely maybe not quite the same as regular TIG wire but it did weld up pretty nicely so I was pretty happy with how it turned out so Time will tell to see if it holds up in the rocks or not, but I figured for the sake of the video, why not just try a filler that's made for cast iron and then follow my normal process of preheating and postheating. Um, I still had to use just regular MIG for inside these areas like this because you just can't reach in there with a TIG welder, so I couldn't use that. So I still used MIG on the inside and everything welded up really nicely. So. Um, I think it's going to be just fine, but I figured, hey, let's try something different. Let's try this uh, easy weld stuff and see how it works. So everything went well. Um, the welds, the welds all seem to seem to hold up just fine. So I'll be interested to get this thing um, after this video. My next video, we'll start kind of focusing on getting that Dana 60 put together. But anyway, this is the process I went through. So. Starting now is welding this main section, then the second part of the video, then I start putting together this top section and then using the easy weld to put this all together. So right now I'm getting the last of these ball joints out. Um, some of these were pretty stubborn on these old Ford knuckles uh, and they did not want to come out. But I'm at the point now, I'm just getting the last one out. And then once I get this last, last ball joint out, then I gotta drill all of these out. I gotta drill these all out to one inch. So that I can put my new high steer on and then I also have to grind this kind of down, clean it up for welding. Whew. So I have to drill these knuckles out all the way up to one inch. I've got a big old one inch drill bit here to drill these out to so that I, I can install the high steer arms on these knuckles. So I'm on the last one right here. This has not been the most ideal thing. Um, 
having to <laughs> drill a one inch hole in something like this with just a basic hand drill isn't the most fun, but it'll, it'll get it done. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm drilling these holes out, then I gotta grind the space down and get ready for welding. And so hopefully welding these high steer arms will be my next step. So that'll be a little process of its own. All right. Yesterday, um, I got I got these all welded up, and I got the holes drilled out for these knuckles. These are four Super Duty uh, knuckles, and so what I'm getting ready to do is to weld the high steer to the old knuckle. So a few things I had to do: I had to strip these down, pull off the ball joints, and then drill the holes out bigger. And so what I'm going to do next is uh, preheat these. I'm going to preheat these knuckles and. I'm going to use uh, my barbecue grill for that. I use my grinder to clean up the area where I will weld my high steer arms to the steering knuckle. I then use my MIG welder to tack the high steer arms to the steering knuckle. After that, I throw them on the grill to preheat them and get them good and warm before I start welding. Turned out all right. So at this part in the video is after I'd realized that I had this entire part all welded up and all finished and that I needed to make another section. So what I did, like I explained before, I went to my friend's shop, Warfab, here in Montrose, and they made me these plates so that I could uh, put this all back together. And then I went through the same process again. but. And that's where I'm at now.
Where the mild steel met the cast iron, I really added a lot of the Easy Weld filler just to make sure that I had good coverage over the cast iron. I wanted to be sure that I spread it out and made multiple passes so that in my mind it would adhere as good as it could to the cast iron. Overall I think it welded up uh, pretty decent and hopefully it works out.